So we love reviewing the biggest, most powerful systems here on KitGuru, but not everyone actually needs a huge PC glowing like a disco. For those that aren't interested in gaming or video work, for example, something super compact may actually be more practical. So today we're checking out Asus's mini PC, the PN50. So if you enjoy what we do here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out. So the Asus PN50 comes in at just $369.99, but there is a catch. This is for the bare bones system, which we will be reviewing today. Bare bones means this system does not come with any RAM, any storage drives or Windows operating system. So make sure to leave some room in your budget for these. The PN50 is aimed at businesses, both office and retail, those that just want a compact system and even home theater setups. Since it's so small, it can easily be tucked out of sight where other systems would usually struggle to fit and can even be attached to the back of a monitor via the included VESA mount. Weighing less than one kilogram and dimensions of 115 by 115 by 49 millimeters, you can almost tuck this little guy into your back pocket. Design wise, it's very sleek and you can see how this would fit right into place in an office environment or even at home. It has a brushed black plastic design with angled accents on the sides, back and the bottom of the unit to cover the airflow vents. On the right side, we have a Kensington lock, which is excellent for those retail or business users. On the bottom, we have four small rubber feet that elevate the system ever so slightly for better airflow. On the front, we have a nice clicky power button too with an LED indicator. It's a premium looking unit despite its small stature. It's simple, but effective. Connectivity wise, it really does have a lot going for it, more so than a lot of full size systems too. So this once again is excellent for business users as well as home use. So on the front, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port that supports DisplayPort 1.4, we have a USB 3.2 Gen 1 USB-A, one combination audio jack for line in, mic in, and headphone out, dual array microphones for use with Windows Cortana, an IR receiver for use with a remote control, which is another great feature that will appeal to business users, and a three in one micro SD card reader. On the back, we have our power port, two more USB a 3.2 Gen 1 ports, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C that supports DisplayPort 1.4. We have an RJ45 port and a full-size DisplayPort. It also has built-in Wi-Fi 6, AX200 and Bluetooth 5 support too. So since we have a full-sized HDMI DisplayPort along with two 3.2 Gen 2 USB-C ports means the PN50 actually supports up to four displays at 4K, but this does require sufficient memory bandwidth. Another thing I was surprised to see is the inclusion of 8K support. So this is supported by using DisplayPort dual mode, which can be done by connecting both USB-C ports to one monitor. All of these high video capabilities combined with the IR receiver could be an excellent way for small businesses to set up displays displays in a store, for example, showing adverts or the company logo, and that can be changed by a remote control. It's actually really handy for those types of uses. For the size of this unit, the connectivity and IO is excellent in my opinion. There's more than enough for most casual users and plenty for those that want the most out of this little system. Specifications wise, our review model came with an AMD Ryzen R7 4700U APU with an integrated AMD Radeon Vega 7 graphics. It's an 8-core 15-watt TDP with a base clock of 2.0 gigahertz and a max boost clock of up to 4.1 gigahertz. So yes, it is bare bones like I mentioned earlier, but it has support for up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4, 3200 megahertz SODIMM RAM. It can support a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive as well, and also has an M.2 2280 port with support for NVMe drives up to one terabyte as well. It comes with a 90 watt power supply since we have the Ryzen 7 variant, and it's actually incredibly small too, with convenient cable type is attached.
So we chose to install 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Ripjaw SoDim DDR4, 3200 MHz RAM, and a WD Blue SN550 one terabyte NVMe SSD. Installation was an absolute breeze despite the PN50's tiny size. Flip the unit over, unscrew the four screws in each corner, and then slide the housing in the direction of the arrow. If you're installing a 2.5 inch drive, then this attaches onto the plate that we just removed. But since we're not doing this, we didn't need it for the next step. You'll see the two RAM slots stacked above each other towards the back, and at the front is the M.2 slot tucked away. Making sure the RAM was the right way round, simply slide the sticks into place and then press down with even pressure, and then the clips will clamp them into place. This is similar to the SSD installation. Install it into the port, press down, and use the screw included with the PN50 to secure the drive into place. Once done, just slide the housing back over and replace the screws. Even if you're not a confident PC builder, the instructions are clear enough and it is easy to install your components. I don't think you should be put off by this in any way if you've never done it before. I'd give it a good eight out of 10 for how easy it is to install or even upgrade in future. I didn't run into any setbacks whatsoever and the system booted first time without any errors. Of course, it's worth re-mentioning that this does not come with Windows. So it's recommended to use Windows 10 Pro for business use, but for those home users, just use Windows 10 Home, that will be fine. So let's get into some tests, shall we? So James from KitGuru reviewed the Asus PB60 in June of last year. You know the specs of our PN50 review sample, but let me clarify James's PB60's specifications so you can see why our test results differ. James's PB60 had an i7-8700T at 2.4 gigahertz with integrated Intel UHD 630 graphics, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 SoDim RAM at 2400 megahertz and a 256 gigabyte M.2 SATA SSD. And taking a look at Cinebench R15, I've included his test results along with some other similar systems. You can see here that the Asus PN50 actually performs excellently, taking second place with a multi-core score of 1112. So I didn't have any comparable systems for Cinebench R20 other than the Razer Blade Stealth 13 that I reviewed earlier this year. Even here, the Asus PN50 wipes the floor with the Razer Notebook due to the AMD 4700U having twice the number of cores. Running PC Mark 10 Express also gave us good scores all round, showing it's capable of doing different tasks at a good level. Despite having just integrated AMD Radeon Vega 7 graphics, the PN50 still proved to pack a punch in comparison to the other systems during our 3D Mark Firestrike benchmark, taking second place again. Putting our WD Blue SN550 through its paces with Crystal Disk Mark showed excellent read and write speeds, which is what we'd expect to see since it's an NVMe drive. Of course, SSD performance will vary depending on the drive that you install. Testing our G-Skill Ripjaw 16 gigabytes of RAM also gave us great results through Ada 64's benchmarking tool. But again, your mileage may vary depending on the speed and capacity that you choose to install yourself. Despite the fact that this system is 100% not aimed at gamers, I wanted to test out a few games just to see if we could handle them. Who knows, a cheeky employee may want some downtime on their lunch break, right? <laughs> If this system was a gaming system, I'd be pushing it to the limit, maxing out every setting to the highest resolution to see what it could do. However, on this occasion, I actually did the exact opposite. I ran these games at the lowest possible settings, all at 1080p, just to see how well they would perform. So Counter-Strike Go on the lowest preset at 1080p did fairly well at nearly 80 FPS average and a 1% low of 44 FPS, which is better than I was expecting. Rocket League on the high performance preset at 1080p average 62 with 1% lows of 36. Finally, League of Legends on very low preset at 1080p gave an incredible 188 FPS average and a 1% low of 111. I was pretty happy to see these results, I must admit. Overall, on the gaming front, I was really impressed. I actually wasn't expecting these results at all, and I'd say that light gaming is absolutely possible on the PN50. Moving on to our final results now, APU temperatures saw an idle of 43 degrees, hitting 74 during Cinebench R20 runs and 77 during Rocket League. I think these results are great since the system is so small and the fan only kicks in once it detects the M.2 slot or APU heating up. 
Sound-wise, the PN50 is actually really quiet. Despite idling around 41, the ambient noise in the room wasn't far off that, and I could only hear the fan in the PN50 kick in during gameplay. Finally, power consumption, I was really impressed with just how little power the system drew during our PC Mark 10 test, and even whilst gaming too. I know I wasn't stressing the system too much during gameplay as I set the games to the lowest to give the best performance, but I still was expecting somewhere above 50 watts. Idling at just under 16 watts was really impressive as well. With great scores across the board from our test results, I think the PN50 by Asus is a very competent little machine that would definitely suit the purposes of the users that this system is aimed at. Taking another look at the price comparison to our review specs that we have, we have the bare bone system, which costs £370, plus around £100 for the RAM that we chose, and another £90 for the SSD that we chose. Then you have to consider Windows 10 Home if you're a standard user, which at full price from Microsoft is £120. You're looking at the cost total of around £680. If you're a business user, however, no doubt you'll want to opt for Windows 10 Pro, which retails for £220 from Microsoft, so you're looking at a total cost of £780. So you are paying a premium for such a powerful system in a tiny unit, but at just under £700 for home use, or just under £800 for business use for a system with so many I.O. connectivity options, 8K support, 4 times 4K display support, and so much more, all in a tiny box just larger than your wallet, I think this is an option worth considering for those that have specific needs in mind. Our review of the PN50 has been solely based on the bare bones system, and as easy as it is to install or upgrade components, we know this won't appeal to everyone. For example, a business user that may be looking to purchase, say, 10 of these, is probably not going to want to buy extra components and then sit around and install everything 10 times over. Luckily, Asus let us know that PC Specialist sells complete PN50 systems that require no extra components whatsoever. For many, this is going to be the preferred way of buying an Asus PN50 system, so let me go over them. Bear in mind these systems are a lot cheaper than our barebone system's total costs because we chose to add that 1TB NVMe SSD, 16GB 3200MHz RAM, along with Windows as an added expense. PC specialists offer four different base model PN50 configurations, and whilst these come fully assembled upon purchase, you can configure the memory and storage options to suit your needs via the PC specialist configurator, which you can see when you click on each of these models and scroll down. Increasing the specifications from the starting 4GB of RAM and 128GB SSD will of course increase the total cost of each model here. Where each of these base models differ is their AP. You. This is where you'll really need to think about what you're going to use the PN50 for. If you're wanting a small system just to type Word documents on, then maybe the cheapest will do fine. Whereas if you're after a home entertainment system, you might want to opt for one of the more powerful and more expensive choices. Starting at £420, you get an AMD Ryzen 3 4300U with four cores, four threads at 2.7 GHz with a max boost clock of 3.7 GHz and AMD Radeon RX Vega 5 graphics. Starting at £460, you get an AMD Ryzen 5 4500U, six cores, six threads at 2.3 GHz with a max boost clock of 4 GHz, and this has AMD Radeon RX Vega 6 graphics. Starting at £530, you get an AMD Ryzen 7 4700U, just like our bare bones system model, with 8 cores, 8 threads at 2 GHz with a max boost of 4.1 GHz, and AMD Radeon RX Vega 7 graphics. Finally, starting at £640, you get an AMD Ryzen 7 4800U, which has 8 cores, 16 threads at 1.6 GHz with a max boost of 4.2 GHz, and an AMD Radeon RX Vega 8 graphics. With an array of external connections, Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth support with the ease of changing the drive and RAM makes the PN50 future-proof to an extent as you can always upgrade these with ease if you ever needed to. And the inclusion of the VESA mount and Kensington lock should appeal to business users as they'll be able to tuck the system securely away with ease. Or if you're aiming to make the ultimate home cinema with the PN50, then it will be a perfect choice as well. So what do you guys think of this system? Let us know down below. Make sure to check out our merchandise 
comments down below as well and our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru. I'll see you in the next one. See you later.